Hey, Dr. Nels here. Welcome to episode three of Coffee with Nels, the podcast. So I've been working on getting my other podcast loaded to YouTube and was able to complete that action here um, today. So under the podcast section on YouTube, the Lindahl letter, which I normally publish every Friday, has 93 episodes now um, loaded. So that did increase my total video count on the old YouTube up to 590, 579 videos. So uh, that's exciting. All right. So what are we going to look at today? We will be back over in Knowledge Reduce. It's on GitHub. There's a whole bunch of these notebooks that are loaded and we have been slowly going through notebooks, kind of digging into how you would access a website that had content on it and what you would go about doing to reduce the knowledge to understand content that's on that web page um, and kind of what would happen there. Um, so all that content that I'm scraping and you'll find that we're going to keep working with the graduation with civic honors website. Again, I do own this website, so um, it's okay. No ethical considerations, no ethical concerns uh, of me scraping my own data. So today, we're going to go out to a notebook called Civic Honors Advanced. Um, it's going to be available on the GitHub. I will put links to this particular file in the description here of the video. You'd want to go ahead and click Open Collab. It's the link at the top. It will take you over to Google's Collaboratory. This is a part of research.google.com. Why is this important? It will let you run these notebooks for free. So as long as you want to log in and access Google's Collaboratory, you'll be able to use these notebooks and you'll be able to run through this code um, and you can do it in this environment that is set up over and managed by Google. So it makes it much easier. Again, my method of looking at these notebooks is to go through a code overview and I write these either before or after. Uh, so to just understand exactly what I'm trying to do with the code, when you work on longer packages and longer sets of code, sometimes the code overview is very helpful for a developer to read it and understand kind of what's coming or what was built in that particular section of the package. I find that code overviews are better for me than just reading through the commented code because then I have a general idea of what the developer was trying to do or accomplish. So here we're gonna run through some function definitions. Um, we'll run through the execution and output. And this is another four step sort of notebook model. So to start this one here, we're gonna hit connect. We're gonna connect to a runtime so this is not a local runtime. This is a runtime for essentially a virtual machine or a virtual notebook environment that's available for me to run here within this Google Collab setup. You can get to it from the GitHub by clicking that button uh, and it makes it really easy. We're gonna go with two lines of Python here as the setup. We're going to go ahead and hit run anyway. You don't wanna just run all code that you would get from GitHub without understanding what you're running. And in this case, all the code is very visible um, and you can run through it and see it's not doing anything malicious. All right, so these packages for the most part are gonna be already installed. That's kind of the flavor that we've seen as we chew through these packages. Again, this is one of the more powerful elements of Python which is with just two lines of code here, we're able to install a bunch of things that will help us be able to quickly 
do very advanced things. So that took 27 seconds. Now we're gonna go with the second import here. We're gonna import some libraries. All right, so you can see the little thing working through it here. We're just gonna import these things. We are gonna import two things here I don't think we've done before, which is we're gonna import Spacey, Matcher, and Collections. Took seven seconds. All right, so the define function here, we're gonna start doing something good in step three. We're gonna go out and grab the website. For the most part, we've been using the same web page content function feature. We've been using the same sets of code here to just grab the HTML and work through it. We've been using the beautiful soup package. Uh, for those of you that have done a lot of work scraping or working with web pages, beautiful soup is an excellent um, repo. Great set of code. <laughs> a lot of fun there with beautiful soup. So that took zero seconds. Now we're going to do some more advanced things here with the map phase function and matcher patterns. So we're going to go ahead and run this. So you can see here through this, we're doing some noun chunks, some named entities, some verbs. We're doing some matching, some pattern matchers, and then some relations between words. You can see here, we're starting to do some stuff to break things down, but we're not yet digging into really complex ways of addressing content on a web page. So we're gonna do a revise, shuffle, and sort. Then we're gonna do some advanced reduce phase functioning. You can see here that we're doing some advanced stuff in terms of finding relations. We're gonna find some noun chunks. We're gonna find a few named entities and we're gonna locate the verbs. So well, we've set the most common here for these things. Now, the next phase here, we're gonna execute the process. So this component piece here is gonna take just a hot minute. And, okay. You know, we may wanna redo this real quick. So you can see here where at the end of this, we can grab here. Ah, we'll leave it. All right, so what we're doing here is printing out some content here. You can see I should have put a most common after the end of these relations um, and the sets mapped. We did not put a most common there, so this is gonna print out every single um, match. <laughs> so um, trends require messages has a whole bunch of stuff um, that'll show up there within this different sets of pairs. So those are interesting. The top noun chunks here we're gonna see again are gonna be the community, the civic honors program individuals, and then the counts. Um, the top named entities, that's not very useful, right? It's just a letter and a count. Top verbs, also not super useful. So here we've started to get a little bit more complex in our analysis here. And that's where this execution phase has been giving us that look. Previously, what we've done in the last two sets of analysis was execute just to find out what happened here with the mapping. You can see in the Civic Honors Analysis Notebook, we just mapped the top phrase sets. And then previously, we mapped the noun chunks, the named entities, and the top verbs. So those are kind of what we've done with these three notebooks. The next step that I would chew through here with this particular sets of content would be the Civic Honors Enhanced Analysis. Um, if you go out to the page for this one, we would just again connect to our runtime, run step one. This one's gonna run some more complex things. You're gonna see spacey, beautiful soup, 
um, scikit-learn and some other stuff. So this one's gonna take just a little bit longer to install. We'll give it just a second. And this notebook here that we just set up is a totally separate runtime from the other Google Cloud notebook. There's no relationship between the two. They're both independent. So we got the first set and there's a bunch of stuff that installed here, request, spacey, beautiful stew, um, scikit-learn. We can see here that we're now installing two other components and they're installing, it's taking a little bit longer. We'll give it just a second here. So this one here you can see was a 12.8 megabyte download to be able to run that one. All right. Looks like it took 46 seconds to go ahead and install that. Now we're gonna do a lot more complex import here as we work on this next notebook. We're gonna go ahead and import and do some scikit-learn components. You'll see those um, pulling through. So a little bit longer from, a little bit longer install. The same set we're gonna do for the web page grab here. We're gonna grab that Civic Honors website. We're gonna get that data. We're gonna do a more enhanced map function. So you can see here, we're grabbing sentiments, we're grabbing data, we're doing a vectorizer. We're working with English stop words, all right? And we're gonna do an enhanced sort function again. We love the sort function and advanced reduce phase function. This one here, we're gonna cut down to some common pieces, those common counts. That way our printout is a little more organized. Then we'll go down to execute the process. All right, here it's running. It's gonna take just a second. So this one here, we did something a little bit different, right? Now we have the top noun chunks, the top named entities, the top verbs. We know the average sentiment score is gonna be at about 40%. We've identified topics now in our top five topics. So you'll see those. The That's a big difference in starting to do something within a function that allows knowledge reduce to occur. So we're gonna start thinking about, hey, how do we identify the topics from a set of content? And what do we do with that? What is a fact? What is knowledge? How do we begin that process? That's what we're kind of walking through uh, with these notebooks here, just kind of starting to dig into and understand content analysis. How do we understand the things that we're reading and how do we parse that? So, all right, this one was a little bit longer here than the previous, previous one. We went over two notebooks. Hopefully you enjoyed some coffee with Nell's time. So thank you for being here for episode three. I hope you enjoyed the day and that's it.